and welcome to Waterfalls Industrial Security Institute. I'm Courtney Schneider, Head of Cyber Policy Research at Waterfall Security Solutions. Last year in 2020, there were 10 cyber attacks reported that shut down industrial operations. It turns out that all of these attacks were targeted ransomware. These 10 attacks were the only cyber attacks that shut down physical industrial operations in 2020. In today's video, we look at those attacks on industrial control systems. Now, before we dive into details, let's look at the big picture. The first half of 2020 saw an increase of over 70% in all targeted ransomware attacks. This is compared to the first six months of 2019. Most of these attacks were targeting IT networks, but some of them hit OT networks as well. How do these attacks work? Well, ransomware attacks generally start with a link to malicious code. The link comes in over an online chat or an email. The victim clicks on the link and is transferred to a website and pulls the harmful code into the victim's computer. That code is what's known in the industry as a remote access trojan, a rat. The rat gives the attackers remote control of the victim's computer. Often the rat has a user interface as well, a user interface that's a lot like a remote desktop. The attackers can move the victim's mouse and they can see what's happening on the screen. The attackers use the computer to look around the victim's network. They find other computers, they find other users, they steal passwords, or more often, they steal password hashes or access tickets, and they spread out. They take over more computers, they take over the most important computers they can find, and then they trigger the encryption process. They scramble the most important files on the most important computers. This shuts down the computers. It cripples the business. And then, of course, they put up a message saying, pay a large ransom if you want the encryption keys to get your computers working again. Now, in years past, the ransom was something like a few hundred dollars for every computer encrypted. Today, the ransom can be in the millions of US dollars. So that's the background, and this is the Industrial Security Institute. So we're not going to look into attacks that shut down IT systems or accounting systems. We're going to look into attacks that shut down OT networks, the physical operations of a business. So in no particular order, attack number one targeted Fisher and Peichel. Fisher & Peichel is a New Zealand-based home appliance manufacturer. In June of 2020, the Nephilim Ransomware Group forced a shutdown of manufacturing and distribution at several of the Fisher & Peichel plants. From public reports, the Fisher & Peichel attack shut down at least five plants for at least five days. So if you keep score, that is 25 plant days of downtime. The second victim we look at was Tower Semiconductor. Tower is an Israeli chip manufacturer who was forced to stop production in September because of a ransomware attack. Again, at least three plants were shut down for at least six days each, which is 18 plant days of lost production. Victim number three was Picanol. Picanol is a Belgian company with factories all over the world. They manufacture weaving machines. News reports say that a ransomware attack took down all 14 Pinnacle factories all over the world for two weeks. That's a big one totaling almost 200 days of plant downtime. Victim number four, Southwire. Southwire is headquartered in the US and is one of the world's largest producers of insulated copper wire. The attack used the maize ransomware. News reports say that the attack shut down at least 10 plants for five days for a total of 50 plant days of downtime. Reports also said that the ransom was demanded in Bitcoin. Now, this is not unusual. Bitcoin transactions are usually very hard to trace and much harder to trace than credit card or money movements. News reports say that the ransomware group demanded ransom in Bitcoin that was equivalent of 6.1 million US dollars. Number five was Lime Breweries. This is an Australian beverage company. They produce beer. They also produce fruit juices and other beverages. The Reveal ransomware group forced at least nine lime plants to shut down for about a week each for a total loss of 63 plant days of production. Attack number six was Steelcase Manufacturing. This is the world's largest furniture manufacturer. Steelcase is headquartered in the U.S. They have 13,000 employees worldwide with over $3 billion in annual revenue. They were forced to shut down all of their factories all over the world for two weeks. The attack group used the Ryuk ransomware. Now it looks like Steelcase had at least 10 plants at the time of the attack. So a two week shutdown would be at least 140 plant days of downtime. Victim number seven was the Australian steel company, Blue Scope Steel. They were hit in March of 2020. In response to the attack, Blue Scope plant switched over to manual operations wherever they could. One plant could not make the switch and had to shut down for two days for a loss of two plant days of production. Victim number eight, 
another silicon chip manufacturer, XFAB. XFAB is headquartered in Germany. The Maze ransomware shut down all six XFAB locations in Texas, Germany, France, and Malaysia. Each site was down for eight days for a total of 48 planned days of lost production. Victim number nine was Everest Steel. Everest has headquarters in the UK. They are a steel miner and manufacturer. The Ryuk ransomware was used to shut down operations in North America, Russia, and the Ukraine. Six plants were hit for three days each, resulting in 18 plant days of production lost. Now, our last victim was the automobile manufacturer, Honda. The snake ransomware, which is also known as ECANS, was used to shut down two plants, one in Ohio and one in Turkey. The snake ransomware has code in it that specifically targets industrial control systems. The plants shut down for four days each. The result was eight plant days of downtime and millions of dollars in production lost. So those were the 10 cyber attacks of 2020 that caused industrial downtime. The bad news is, is that these attackers are getting very good at what they do. They're using tools and techniques that only a few years ago were exclusive to nation state level attacks. Back then, a few years ago, we were thinking, nation states? Why would a nation state come after me? My business is not important enough to be a target of an attack. Well, today, organized crime are using nation state level attack techniques in their targeted ransomware attacks. And organized crime is coming after everyone with money. They don't care how important or unimportant we are. The good news is, is that we can deploy defensive techniques that can reliably defeat these nation state level attacks. And we can do it today. The defensive technology is called a unidirectional security gateway. The defensive methodology is called SECOT, Secure Operations Technology. With SECOT class protections in place, private industry can and does routinely and reliably defeat nation state level sophisticated attacks. The bad guys keep upping their game. On the defensive side, we must do the same. If you'd like more information on how to protect industrial sites from targeted ransomware, visit waterfall-security.com. And if you would like to know what the world's most secure industrial sites are doing to protect their OT networks, ask us to send you a free copy of Andrew Ginter's new book, Sec OT. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching, and let's hope that 2021 is better for all of us in every way than was 2020.